purpose of this webinar today is to talk about Excel Web App in Office 365 and compare that to Excel services in SharePoint. My name is Travis Hargett. I'm the president of Eastridge Technology. Uh, we are a software services um, systems integration firm focusing on Microsoft products and platform and uh, a cloud champion with Office 365 and Windows and Team. So just to recap, uh, Microsoft Office 365, I'm sure you've heard about it. Um, it includes Office Professional Plus, the version that you can either live on your desktop or in the browser, um, Exchange Online, SharePoint Online, and Link Online. For the purpose of this webinar, we're really going to be drilling into SharePoint Online and the features of Office Web App. A little bit more information if you haven't seen this. Um, pretty comprehensive coverage from a SharePoint and Exchange point of view of what's hosted by Microsoft in addition to what you have with Link. And that's all backed financially by Microsoft with a 99.9% uh, financially backed SLA. Now, I, I wanted to show this real quick. There are three versions of Office 365. Actually, there's four. Um, there's a free version out there, and it's called uh, Windows Live. So you can go to your SkyDrive and actually see some of the Excel web app and, and Word web app applications in use for free. Uh, there's a version for small business. There's a version for enterprise and a version for education as well. Um, users that want to configure enterprise class options of Office 365 can choose between information worker or kiosk worker settings. Both of these um, license levels do allow you to pick either Excel web app or Word web app or, or not. So you can choose to have these applications or not, which we'll get admitted in on. Um, what a lot of people don't know about Office 365 and SharePoint Online and Exchange Online is there's still a very high level of control that you can exert over these um, online services. It's not simply all controlled and um, uh, you know, accessed by, by Microsoft personnel. You can do things like remote PowerShell, have uh, web services integrated into our portal, and then customize SharePoint. 2010, even though it's uh, living in the sandbox solution, we can still fire up Visual Studio and do some very compelling things. From a sign-on point of view, this is just important um, for the demo coming up around Excel services and Excel web app. Um, there's two ways to get into Office 365. You can either have a Microsoft Online ID and sign in with your cloud identity, or you can have a federated ID. And that just means that we've got um, Active Directory Federation Services, or ADFS, set up in your environment to federate your Active Directory with your cloud-based system of uh, Exchange Online and SharePoint Online and Link. So there's two ways to get at that um, to, to accomplish single sign-on. Real quick about platform requirements. Um, if you're going to be using Office Web App, um, you need to have Internet Explorer, Firefox, or Safari, and yes, we have used these on an iPad. Uh, it works pretty darn well. Um, there are some small limitations, but by and large, 95% of the functionality still works pretty well in Safari and Firefox. Now, let's get to the meat of this. Excel Web App, what is it? Um, well, Excel Web App, according to Microsoft, is going to extend the Excel experience um, into the browser. So the, the next question that we get when we talk about Excel Web App is, um, well, didn't we already have access to Excel Web App? Wasn't that part of SharePoint? Well, yes and no. Uh, with SharePoint 2007, there was a feature called Excel Services that was launched, and then it was improved upon with SharePoint 2010. Now, there's some big differences between Excel Services and SharePoint and the Excel web app. Um, Excel services is really targeted more for kind of a BI distribution platform to visualize spreadsheets and visualize charts and reports, but also have programmable extensibility so that you can customize these things and how they look inside of SharePoint. 
Excel Web App is really the viewer. And it's not just the viewer, but it also lets you edit the documents and edit the data inside of your browser. So when we look at a real detailed list between the two, you can see there's some big differences between Excel services in SharePoint 2010 and Excel Web App. Namely, I can't edit <laughs> uh, and change or collaborate with multiple people with Excel services. With Excel Web App, I can't. It's part of the Office Web Applications. Now, to be clear, Excel Web App and Office Web Applications is a feature that you can enable inside of SharePoint 2010. It's different from Excel services. Uh, but this, there's a lot of confusion around this topic, so I want to be very, very clear about what these two things are and, and how they operate. For my demo today, I'm going to be showing Office 365 and Excel Web App. Uh, real quick, this is a fun one. There's a website out at uh, sharepoint.microsoft.com, and I've got the URL below. But it, there, there's a real-time example of a rich Excel spreadsheet that's been stored um, in Excel online and rendered in an Excel web app. And then basically that same document has been taken over and saved into a Google spreadsheet. So you get some, you really get a visualization here of what you have and don't have. Of course, we lose the neat things like spark lines, but you know, also images. I've lost my medals and my flags and my Olympic rings. Um, the charts are gone as well, but I still have the raw data. So if all you want is the raw data, maybe that works for you. But this is a good example of fidelity between Excel on your desktop and Excel web app. With that, let's go to a demo. So what I have here is a SharePoint online site. It's part of our Office 365 subscription. Um, what I want to do is really focus on the Office Web App feature and show you a couple of illustrations of how it's used in a BI capability as well as a collaboration. So let me come over to, let's see, let's go to the IT web. And I've got a dashboard set up here. Now, most of the major dashboard components on this page are running from Excel. So I'm going to scroll a little bit so everyone can see. But I've got three um, Excel files that are being used to build charts and um, more of a business intelligence dashboard. So I've got hardware purchases by month, service requests, and fiscal year 2010 costs. Over here, I've got a KPI chart. But it's actually a KPI list uh, part in SharePoint where we can actually um, edit individual values. It's not being driven off Excel exclusively. Well, how does this work? I mean, you know, it's one thing to see a picture. It's another thing entirely to see, you know, how hard was it to wire it up and build this page? Let me show you. I'm going to go to the top here where it says page and click on that. And now you can see I've got the ribbon available to me. It's contextual depending on what's on the page. I'm going to edit my page. Now we can see a view of all the different content areas on my SharePoint page. So over here in FY2010 costs, I'm going to this one. Okay, edit the web part. Scroll to the right. Pull up the panel for that web part. And we can see right out of the gate that it's pulling from a workbook. Uh, on our SharePoint site uh, and shared documents, and it's called itfycost.xlsx. Right, I can change that if I want to. There's a named item in that spreadsheet called fycost. Okay? We can choose other ones if we want to. But for fun, let's just go ahead and open that spreadsheet up. Stop editing my page here. Go ahead and click on itfy10 costs. Back up to the right location. Then go to IT Web Shared Documents, IT FY Costs. Now, notice I got a couple of choices here. I can open this in Excel on my desktop, 
or I can edit it in the browser. So let's see how much we can do if we edit in the browser. Looks similar, right? I've got a small ribbon up top. Not all the options that I would normally have with Excel. That's kind of home and insert, that's it. But I do have below a couple different tabs. This is the actual pivot table that's generated, that the, the chart is pulling data from. I've got the actual raw data that's building the pivot table. And then I've got the chart itself right here. But I'm, I'm missing some features here. Now, if I want to look at the named item for this chart, you realize I, I can't do it here. I can't look at the variables. I can't see the names. So I want to open this in itself. So now I've got the same spreadsheet open in Excel. You can see it's a little different. I've got more of a three-dimensional kind of view here on my chart. Uh, I still have the pivot table. I still have the raw data. But if I come over here and actually look at um, look at the data, or actually look at the formulas, I'm going to look at the name manager inside of formulas. You can see where I've got mapped FY cost, and I have it scoped out to this particular sheet to and everything between um, A1 and I15, which is that chart. So I've named that in the workbook. So my SharePoint, uh, my Excel web app is actually pulling this FY cost item out of the spreadsheet. But in order to find the values, I still got to work in Excel. But I can certainly publish them to SharePoint and render them as an Excel web app. That's kind of the magic behind setting up a simple, simple dashboard. But we did the same thing here for hardware purchases by month, as well as service requests. So let's go back and let's open up hardware uh, purchases by month. Or hardware by month. Now I'm going to edit this in my browser, show you some of the collaboration features. Now right out of the gate, I'm, I'm in the Excel web app, but look down here in the bottom right, it says two people editing. So I can see Alex Arney is in here, and I'm in here. Um, so I know Alex, let me see if I can. For on Microsoft link. Pull up my link client. Say, hey, Alex, can you change January number to 20,000? He was wrong. See if Alex got my message. We've got headsets here, January, February, March, April, and then we're totaling for the first four months. And we can see a, a spark line here that we have in place as far as uh, how it went up and then went down. So it looks like you changed it to a thousand. Hmm. And to be 20K. There we go. Looks like her change just went through. 20,000. So I immediately saw the spark line change there. And likewise, I can do the same thing. I can come to a cell and make this $40,000. It should dramatically change that number, the in place graphic, as well as the chart here at the end. So, what you just saw there, that, that quick little demo, just two people in the same spreadsheet at the same time, changing different cells through the Excel web app. We never had to open Excel on our desktop. But two quick demos, one about dashboards, one about getting into editing spreadsheets with Excel. Pretty straightforward. My slide here. If you got other questions or issues and want to learn more about Excel web apps or Excel services for that matter, happy to help you. Uh, give us a call, send us an email, follow us on Twitter at Eastridge Tech. 
or come to the website at www.eastridge.net. Thank you very much.